Good afternoon yet again. Brandon Warren here coming to you almost live from the Brandon Warren Podcast Project. The as yet untitled Brandon Warren Podcast Project, that is. Again, Brandon Warren here coming to you on a beautiful Tuesday afternoon here in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Right in the thick of things here with playoff baseball and football starting to heat up. And so let's just dive right into the first bunch of topics we got here. First of all, uh, we'll cover a little bit of news here going forward as we got Josh Freeman inking with the Minnesota Vikings here within the last couple of days. Corresponding move, the Vikings waived uh, third quarterback. McLeod Bethel Thompson still has practice squad eligibility, so we'll see how that shakes out. Bethel Thompson, a bit of a cult favorite here in Minneapolis for his preseason play, but uh, for now at least it looks like he's going to be uh, off the radar a little bit. Looking at Freeman, you got a guy that obviously much maligned this season with his relationship with head coach Greg Schiano in Tampa Bay, and you're also looking at a guy who's had trouble with accuracy as a quarterback, has a big arm, big frame, looks like a big, strong quarterback, still only 25 years old. So Vikings are, you know, they're not going to start him this coming week, but they're obviously taking a flyer on a guy whose immense physical talents certainly could be unlocked into something very special, especially given the the team that they can surround him with in Minnesota here with the, the skill position players that'll be near him or around him in this offense so obviously you don't take a flyer on a guy this point in the year for three million dollars without thinking he's probably going to get a chance to start but it sounds like Matt Castle will probably start this weekend but yeah keep an eye on Freeman once he gets the the playbook down and basically gets comfortable in this offense getting a chance to start and showing the Vikings what they may have going forward because a big decision looms in the offseason with what the Vikings are going to do at the quarterback position, whether it's it's going into the draft or sticking with Freeman, they can franchise him based on the one-year contract that he signed. So if he plays well enough to be franchised, obviously the Vikings would probably even be happy enough to give him a long-term contract like the one he had in Tampa Bay, which was slated to expire after this year. So, yeah, three guys here that all are at least somewhat starting caliber, which means that Rick Spielman's definitely going to have his work cut out for him at the quarterback position going forward. Another recent or somewhat recent news, uh, breaking news item here is P.J. Walters declaring minor league free agency uh, from the Twins, and you'll see a lot of that coming up here in the next few days. Uh, another guy is uh, Kevin Slowey from the the Marlins, who was outrighted off the 40-man roster, much like Walter was, Walters was in season. You'll see guys that will, will take their opportunity to have their six-year or six-year-plus minor league free agency, and so Walters is a guy like that. Pitched for the Twins the last couple years and really did good out of the gate, but kind of fizzled as the season wore on. Did okay for the the playoff contending AAA Rochester Red Wings, but he's going to go out and see what's around there. I know that on on Twitter his dad had said he's going to look out, see what else is around. He enjoys his time in Minnesota, but wants to see if there's any opportunities elsewhere. So best of luck to P.J. Walters in looking for another job here. And then you just kind of look at the rest of the Twins' 40-man roster. Duke Welker came over as the player to be named later in the Morneau trade. So the Twins' trade of Morneau to the Pirates is complete. Twins acquiring Alex Presley, who most of us saw down the stretch, play center field for the Twins. And then a a hard-throwing left-handed reliever, again named Duke Welker, who will be now put on the 40-man roster. Apparently he can hit the high 90s with his fastball. Definitely has some control issues, but... Has pitched a little bit in the major leagues, has a little bit of experience, so it's a little bit more than just a flyer. And you know, maybe a left-handed Jim Hoey, which is going to obviously evoke images and emotions that, that Twins fans are not comfortable with. But you know, another hard thrower, another guy to throw in the bullpen to, you know, who knows, maybe replace Josh Reneke next year or compete with Michael Tonkin for a bullpen role going forward. And so basically that's that's the news that I have to break to you. One thing that I wanted to make clear with this podcast project was that interaction from fans was going to be huge, and there was a big outpouring of Twitter handle, uh, excuse me, Twitter people uh, tweeting under the the hashtag WarnPod for subjects here. So we'll we'll hit some of those. They also had Facebook as well. So I got eleven subjects here to hit. We'll try to get all of them in the fifteen minutes here. Again, your podcast and Facebook correspondence is welcome. If you have any questions you want asked or answered on the podcast here, just uh, use it under hashtag WarnPod. That's W-A-R-N-E-P-O-D. And by saying that out loud, I actually answered the first question, which was from Seth Stowe's at Seth Tweets 
on Twitter asking how to pronounce that. It's Warren Pod. Uh, I think he probably was joking, but anyway, yeah, so uh, Warren Pod, that's how we're going to go with it. Moving on to the second question I have from Josiah Shanks at Josiah Shanks on Twitter asking what cheap free agents the Twins should target. And that kind of ties in with the next question asked by Alex Keenholz, uh, also from Twitter. I believe he writes for TwinkieTown.com, a, a previous place that I'd written for, asking for names of Twins targets going into this offseason. And I think that's going to be a, a hotly contested item as fall wraps up here. We go into winter with the winter meetings and free agency and trades and all that kind of stuff. When you, when you look at the positions on the whole, I don't think you're looking at a Twins team that's looking to add a catcher, probably not a first baseman, so maybe Justin Morneau on a reunion, but I, I'd be really skeptical of that. As far as infielders, I mean, the only position I think the Twins would really address would be shortstop, and that's primarily due to the fade that Pedro Florimo had down the stretch. And so, if, I mean, if they looked for a shortstop, Johnny Peralta's out there, bigger bat, can't really can't really field shortstop anymore. He's coming off the 50-game suspension for the biogenesis implications. I, I'm not entirely positive the Twins would have any interest there. I think another team will snap him up, sign him to a, an $8 million per year deal for two or three years. So I, I would guess Twins wouldn't have any interest in Peralta. Your other options in a, in a cheaper market at shortstop are Clint Barmas of the Pittsburgh Pirates and Brendan Ryan coming out from the Yankees. I mean, those are two guys that aren't entirely different from what you have in Florimon defense first and uh, and basically no bat to speak of. So I think if the Twins are going to do anything in the infield, you might look for a utility type guy. But the biggest thing there is Eduardo Escobar is already in-house, does everything you want defensively. And if, if you're going to go get a defensive first guy, you may as well just stick with what you have in-house for the league minimum salary. So I don't think we'll, you'll see a, the Twins add any kind of big-time talent in the infield. Even at third base, if the Twins wanted to go with a bridge to Sano and maybe move Trevor Plouffe over to first base, basically your only options are Kevin Euclid, Michael Young, Mark Reynolds. None of those guys really fit the bill of what the Twins are trying to do with Reynolds is a big strikeout guy, not really a great defensive third baseman, if I recall correctly. And you know, Euclid coming off a big injury, I'm not sure if he'd have any interest in Minnesota anyway. And Michael Young, again, no idea what the interest level would be there, but both he and Euclid are in their mid to upper 30s. And so it doesn't really make a ton of sense to go after those guys. Now, when you look at the outfield, you're certainly starting to see at least a chance the Twins could add somebody. Again, probably would need to be a center fielder type with the idea that Alex Presley could battle for a fourth outfielder slash starting job. And, you know, somebody that Aaron Hicks could push aside after starting the season next year at AAA, which is what I think will happen. But, honestly, the, the center field depth really isn't there this offseason either. you got Rajay Davis, Franklin Gutierrez, Chris Young of the Oakland A's, who has a, an $11.5 million option that I would, I would guess the A's would decline. And then Andres Torres. You also have David Murphy of the Texas Rangers, but he hasn't played exclusive center field at really any point in his career and has basically been relegated to the corners. Sort of reminds me of like a David DeLucci type when it comes to that. So, you know, center field's not a really big spot in terms of, of talent available that the Twins could really easily go plug in. And honestly, I think they'd be happy to plug Alex Presley in there for the next, you know, couple months going into the 2014 season and just deal with, with center field until Aaron Hicks or Byron Buxton or whoever settles in that role next is ready so again you know you, you want to go into pitching which is obviously the big big hot topic or or big hot hot button topic you're going into the offseason there's a few arms uh Masahiro Tanaka is probably the biggest one and you know you obviously look to him as as they're probably the only target they would target of the top tier free agents and even then his posting fee if that's in ex excess of 30 40 50 million dollars I just can't envision the Twins going out and, and doing that kind of thing. Even even the bigger free agent starters like Irvin Santana, Matt Garza, I mean, Santana will, will require a compensation pick, except from the Twins, of course, because they're exempt, whereas Matt Garza is, is exempt because he was traded in the offseason. 
I just don't see the Twins really reaching out and giving that kind of deal. Garza obviously didn't work out with the Twins the first time around, and Santana's probably going to command some something like a five or six year deal at 15, 18 year, 18 million per year. Again, I don't know that that's a good move for the Twins, even if they were willing to shell out that kind of money. So, I think you know you'll you'll be basically looking at the Phil Hughes of the world, the Bronson Arroyos. Paul Mahalam, the, the left-hander who hit Carlos Gomez towards the end of the year and kind of gave up the home run to Carlos Gomez, kind of spurred that whole big issue with the Braves and the Brewers down the stretch. I think those are the kind of guys the Twins will target. You know, hopefully hopefully not settle for that kind of deal again where they sign, you know, a, a fifth-tier starter. But at the same point, you got to look at a guy like Alex Meyer coming up and breaking through He's out, reportedly throwing gas in the Arizona Fall League today, so yeah, there's a lot of facets that they got to approach here with the uh, with the rotation going forward that will make it a little bit difficult. I don't I don't think the Twins should look to you know resign Mike Pelfrey or anything like that. I think they do have to aim a little bit higher. Phil Hughes had a sub four ERA on the road, something like six point two at home. So getting him into a park where home runs are going to be a little less frequent would be good for him. And uh, so I, I think Phil Hughes is kind of a slam dunk target this offseason. If you can have him on a two-year deal based on how poorly he pitched for the Yankees last year, I think that's that's a good start. Moving right along, the final Twitter question that we have is from Dale Ruck, wondering is Joe Maurer going to be ready for spring training or is this going to be just another Justin Morneau situation? And quite honestly, Dale, I, that's, a, that's a great question. I think... I think the plan is that he's going to be just fine for the spring, but in essence, I'm really not entirely sure that anybody knows. I, I did note after the last game that Maurer's eyes were oddly dilated, and again, probably looking into it far too much, either he had come out of a dark room or something, but to me, that would suggest he was still receiving some sort of treatment, whether it was you know, spending time in a dark room away from stimulus or he, he maybe he'd just been in a dark room for whatever reason. I just I think I think there's a decent chance that he's still going to experience symptoms here for a little while into the winter. We'll just lay low. And I, I'm honestly of the of the belief that he should play first base next year and going forward. So obviously, I, I think Mauer will be ready for the spring. But I think the idea will be that he'll play first base. Jose Mio Pinto, Chris Herman and Ryan Domit can all share the catcher's duties. Or, if they want to go off the rails a little bit, they could also bring in A.J. Brzezinski as a free agent, especially if they want a free agent that kind of, with the idea of showing the guys how to play again, kind of getting that fire back into a Twins team that's been kind of, I don't want to use apathetic, but it's a Twins team that's, in in the eyes of a lot of fans, looked like they've been sleepwalking for the past two years. So, if Brzezinski's in there as in the mix, you know, that could also be interesting. But I think basically you got to really go with Maurer at first base. I don't think catching can be an option for him. And you have to think of his contract as a sunk cost, and you need to get product- production excuse me, at any cost from Maurer rather than running the risk of him getting another concussion and, and basically being thrown off the rails. And, you know what, I lied. There's one more Facebook question. We'll tackle the Twitter questions here in the next couple days. The last Facebook question, excuse me, Twitter question that we'll hit is from Ryan Henning, and he's at Victoria WX Rhino. So he's, he's kind of a weather guy. He asks, as we wrap up here, what twin is most likely to be traded for value in the offseason? I think the biggest target there, or the biggest guy that can be dealt for value, is Oswaldo Arcia. I don't think he should be, I don't think it'd be a good idea. But I think he carries the most value as, as a 22-year-old guy who held his own in the big leagues. When you look at former twins at that age who held their own, you're, you're up against the Herbex, the Mowers, and the Tony Olivas of the world. I mean, that that's fabulous company to be in, and that should obviously have the twins feeling like Arcia is a big chip for the future. Now, if you need to cash that chip in for pitching, that might be what the twins have to do. And we're coming up on that 15 minute mark here so for now this is Brandon Warren signing off we'll see you in a couple days